Okay, so MoDOT is evaluating uh, a new program called Access Ramp. It's by Transsoft Solutions. Uh, it's uh, by the makers of AutoTurn, uh, Taurus Roundabout, and the Diamond Interchange tools that we currently own and operate. Uh, when it's installed in ORD, you can see it's got its own uh, ribbon area. So when you expand that out, you'll see that we've got all kinds of different uh, tools. It looks similar uh, to the rest of the Transoft tools. First of all, you have a settings, uh, which will load up the license and the program for this one. And so your normal program settings are in here if you're dealing with feet or inches or whatever you're dealing with there. Um, different things down here. Uh, design guidelines. So right now I just have Missouri DOT and the ADA AG, which is the default uh, that comes from Transoft. But as you can see, they've been working with a lot of different states and getting their uh, standards. And they we sent them our standards some time back. And so they're using our curbs and curb heights and different types of curbs that we have uh, to create these access ramps. So overall, the tool is designed to create all the line work and even a surface uh, for an ADA compliant sidewalk or curb ramp in different locations. You can kind of see I have one drawn back here already. The one I'm going to show you is going to deal with uh, this location right here where I want to have a uh, an ADA ramp that might go across a curbed roadway. As you can see I created one here earlier uh, that also does the the arc uh, inside of a uh, radius return for an intersection uh, and it'll complete all this information you can go modify it after it's been placed out there and modify the length of it uh, modify the elevations of certain points on there um, most of the rest of these things are are just informational in here um, then there's properties so we can go in and set up different levels that these things go on uh, set up the colors for the curb ramps, colors for annotation, and all you have to do is just kind of click on uh, the little palette that they have out there and go out and change any of the information that you see here. Okay. Uh, the other thing here, design guidelines, um, if you wanted to make your own, if you didn't like the, the ones that came with the software, you can copy one of these uh, and make any of the changes you want or create a brand new one even or even just take a look at uh, what's involved with one. So you can kind of see these are the different types that are in uh, the one that we've got selected here, perpendicular. That's kind of the one I'll be trying to do here or show. Uh, so it'll have the flares and all the information uh, for creating that will be based on the Missouri DOT, but the shape and everything can be created from the Transoft Solution one. So you can mix and match different things. Uh, the other options you have in here is to generate the ramp, edit the ramp after the fact, and generate reports. It even comes with tutorials and some help that you can get from this. Um, the edit ramp, I find that uh, sometimes when you come into a ORD file, it doesn't automatically always let you just select the ramp and edit it. Sometimes you have to go out and come back in, uh, but in this one it will probably allow it. So what I've done is I've got this roadway out here that has curb information on it uh, and elevations are based on the the um, corridor and then also in that corridor we have a sidewalk and I've just done uh, a small area right here where I've done a parametric constraint so we've got a normal sidewalk coming in I want the sidewalk to meet up with the curb here and then come back out and so I've just got a little parametric constraint in there uh, to allow us to put in our curb ramp through this section Okay, so I do have a couple of lines drawn out here. There's a, a line right there uh, that represents the the back of the curb and then also the front of the sidewalk. And then I've got one here that uh, deals with the back of the sidewalk. As you can see, this is just the regular one that comes with our templates. It's got a buffer here, a sidewalk, and then another buffer. So just to show how this works, we've got the generate ramp tool. And that's going to pull this information up to say what kind of guidelines do you want. 
As far as the shape goes, uh, the ones that come with the program are pretty decent shapes. Uh, and then what you can do is come down here and select what the curb standard is after that. And so for our curbs, we can use the Missouri DOT ones. And that'll give a list of the different curb types that we have uh, from Missouri DOT. So I'll just do a type A gutter in there. And then it says, well, what do you want to anchor this on? So you have all different, four different things in here that you can choose from to anchor your uh, curb information to. We'll just do the back of the curb. That's the line that I have drawn out here. I don't think you have to necessarily draw your own line work in there, but I like to do that so I know that my profiles are good throughout here. Um, you could use the ones that come with the template. I have done that. That's what's happening up here in this one. I've just used the lines that come with the template uh, and created our information off of that. And you can do that here. Okay, once you get this set up, like I'm going to do the perpendicular one, you can see there are other kinds. The blended transition, that's what I used up here. Um, depressed corner, there's a parallel one. If you wanted to do that, I'm going to do this perpendicular one. So we'll say OK to that. And the, now this one doesn't have pop-ups like, uh, say, our civil cells do. What it does is it shows you down here in the lower left corner what it wants. So it says pick the curb geometry to anchor. So that's going to be the back of the curb. So we're going to pick that line. And it's going to go out and take a look at it and see if it's got elevation to it. If it's got elevation to it, then it will allow you to do that. So I'll say OK to that, and it says a secondary element. So we can pick that secondary element, and it's looking at the sidewalk proposed. So we've got that as an elevation. So we'll say OK. And then it wants to know where your saw cuts are going to be uh, for placing this. You can just actually left-click data point on there. You can move these saw cuts at any point. So we're just going to come out here, and I'm just going to go beyond the, the sidewalk area click it in there and then it asks for the next point so I'll left click in there and you just have to be in between uh, these two lines to place it if you go too far left or right you'll see that red text that appears that says it can't do it so we're just gonna left click and place that in here and it will start to place that curb ramp And once you get that in there all this information is adjustable you can click on the different parts and change them around so that initial placement you don't necessarily have to worry about getting it perfect you can come in and create those now there's different parts in this curb ramp that you can modify uh, and then this edit ramp also just brings back up this edit curb ramp so the first time when you place it it's really just switching to the next tool to edit ramp and then you can make all the changes you want if something's in red then it's out of compliance and you have to do different things in there to modify that or change it. Uh, one thing is you can create compliant flares. So you can go ahead and check mark that and it'll adjust these flares to make that slope reach the max or, or be under the max. The other thing is you got cross slopes up here. Um, you can zoom in at this location. You can see that there are certain things that you can change like these elevations throughout here. So we've got an elevation uh, for our outer points. And then we've got, uh, if you look in, zoom in, you can see 4 equals that information. So here's 4. So if you wanted to change the elevation at that point, you could do that. And that's all you do is you end up changing these elevations and getting your cross slopes to reduce. Okay. Um, down here at the bottom, you also have this generate surface. So you can turn that on. And it'll say, where do you want to see the surface? I want to see it over in the default 3D and it'll go ahead and create a surface out there for you uh, that you can use to clip out, trim, whatever you want to do. So if you say that you're good with this one, you can go ahead and click OK. Um, later we can come back and modify that, but it's created that surface for us. If we go to edit ramp, all you have to do is pick on any area on that ramp and it'll pull it right back up. So if you needed to, or wanted to make adjustments to this, uh, you could do that at any point. Okay, and as you can see, if I change that elevation, it puts that cross slope down, but then it makes the other slope percentage go up. So you just have to modify these elevations to get it the way you want it. Okay, if you look at the 3D that it created, 
So I'll just go back over into the 3D. It's created this surface out here for you. And with this just being a, uh, a regular uh, surface, if I click on that, you can get the heads up on it. You can see you've got all the surface tools. You can make it active. You can export it out. Uh, you can put even a uh, pavement template or something like that on it, just like you can with our regular surfaces. Uh, the other thing you can do is clip out. So if I want to zoom out just a little bit and say I want to clip that sidewalk out, you can hover over the uh, the grips for the corridor, come into our regular clipping tools, add a clipping reference, and you can come out and select that uh, surface. And then when you reset, it will go ahead and clip out that sidewalk and put in our new sidewalk uh, surface that will overtake that. So if we want to take a look at what that did for us, you can see that it has created a curb ramp right in there for us uh, and brought in the curb, slid it down. Now we've got that opening right there. As you can see that it's gone back up and met the sidewalk on either side. So it's not too bad. It's got a little glitches here and there still every once in a while. You can see in the surface back there it kind of uh, kind of changes it up a little bit. Um, but we can make modifications to that. It would be a short little modification. Really easy to create the curb ramp and then just go modify the surface a little bit if you need to. So you can see that, that would save you a lot of time trying to create uh, this model uh, by hand. But you can kind of see how that, that tool works. So it's a really neat tool. We're looking at it right now. Um, I think we may hopefully get to use it some in the future. I don't know how much ADA we do currently, but um, if we end up doing a lot of ADA, this tool could really save some time in creating that. If you had just a sidewalk project, this would be a, could be a lifesaver trying to figure out how to create these surfaces. So that's, uh, that's the access ramp tools, and uh, that'll do it for this video.